Marcos, 817 here, Big 550, KTRS. Uh, C-SPAN, we all know what it is. We all watch it. C-SPAN 1, C-SPAN 2. Susan Swain is the president of C-SPAN, and she's out with a brand new book called First Ladies, Presidential Historians on the Lives of 45 Iconic American Women. And we're thrilled to say that she joins us live via Skype. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. Nice to be with you vicariously in St. Louis. Great city. You got it. Thanks. All right. So um, let's talk about the book. The book is an outgrowth of what uh, was a couple of programs on C-SPAN, right? Oh, not a couple of programs. A whole year-long series that we did beginning on President's Day 2013 all the way through to President's Day 2014. We worked with the White House Historical Association, a team of historian advisors and hundreds of historical sites around the United States to try to capture for television the biographies of the 45 women who have been in the role of First Ladies. After the series was over, about this time last year, started on translating what we learned into a book that just came out on April 14th. And that's the book that I'm holding in my hands here, First Ladies, Presidential Historians on the Lives of 45 Iconic American Women. Uh, Susan, what is it, what are one, two, or three things that you found out that you didn't know that was interesting about some of these First Ladies? Well, what's interesting is how many of them we don't know about as Americans. A number of the First Ladies who have really interesting lives have fallen into the dustbin of history. I think about Helen Taft, for example, Nellie Taft. She was responsible for bringing the cherry trees to Washington. Now, you think about Washington, D.C., it's iconic every spring when the cherry blossoms bloom, and uh, people come from all over the world to see them. It was Helen Taft who was responsible for bringing them because she had a vision that Washington could be an international capital city and also one that people here could enjoy. Uh, so that's an example of the kinds of contributions. It was a later first lady that planted a rose garden, uh, Ellen Wilson, and then a later first lady, Jacqueline Kennedy, who saw the symbolic virtue of the, of the rose garden and began to encourage President Kennedy to do all of those press conferences and greetings of foreign dignitaries in the Rose Garden. So you see links from First Lady to First Lady that are really interesting. Obviously the role of the First Lady has changed through the years because it really has to change with the changing times. But what do you find, and I know it may be hard to pinpoint, but what is one of the, one or two of the most important things that they have in common? Well, they, they all find their most important role is support. Politics is a family business. Some of them are public people and some of them are not. Uh, and those that are public people try to take as much advantage of the role as they can and use the prevailing news media of the time uh, to do that. You look at Michelle Obama and her extensive use of social media. Uh, she's on every place, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, uh, using uh, the, uh, those platforms where the public are, and particularly younger voters, to be able to, to reach uh, the public. Uh, it was Florence Harding, a generation earlier, that began to see the value in Hollywood and reached out to the movie community, and they began to do short subjects about the presidents that became enormously popular in the movie theaters. And Eleanor Roosevelt wrote columns in the newspaper and uh, also used radio addresses as a way to reach the public. So they all had a platform uh, and uh, those that really enjoyed the public side of it began to use the prevailing news media to do it. I might say one of your local first ladies, Bess Truman, is perhaps the last one to demand the living a private life. She spent much of the time, and remember history thrust her into the role, but she spent much of the time back home in Missouri and uh, tending to family issues and tried to stay out of the limelight as much as possible. First ladies can't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah, really interesting. Uh, so much more to talk about with Susan Swain, president of C-SPAN. The book is First Ladies. A couple more questions for you. Uh, any presidential historian would know that there have been 43 people sworn in and 44 presidents, and yet you have 45 first ladies. What's going on there, President Oh, my Swain? gosh. Is there, a, is there a scandal brewing? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's a first ladies math. So there, there were 40, uh, there were, Grover Cleveland served non-consecutive roles, so we subtract one for him. But two of the presidents had wives who died while they were in office, first ladies who died while they were in the role. 
And that first one was Tyler. He had two first ladies. And then Wilson, whom I referenced, uh, who did the White House, his wife died about a year and a half into the presidency. And he married a local celeb uh, celebrity a jeweler by the name of Edith Galt. And she famously became a, a real de facto president because he had a stroke and was incapacitated. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that uh, they sort of had to run everything through her as, she, as he had a stroke and sort of sat in bed. There were many people who believed that she was running the government. They, there are many people. She said she only controlled access to the president, but what else is there, really? Uh, she remains a role model of how not to approach uh, because she was complicit in the cover-up of his illness along with the president's doctors. And it's also something that could never happen today. They, you could not get away with that kind of absence from the White House as they were able to do at that time. Except President Obama hasn't held a news conference in, you know, six and a half years. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> Susan, Susan, let me ask you, going forward, if, in fact, Hillary Clinton becomes president of the United States, then Bill Clinton will not only become f a former president, but also a first husband. So the, the, the future editions of this book are going to be quite different. Well, they might be, or they might have an anomaly. Uh, because uh, you can't see very many future first ladies casting their hat into the ring to run for public office. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt was also an anomaly, and the first ladies that followed her didn't follow her model. Hillary Clinton always looks back to Eleanor Roosevelt as her role model of, of how she's approached it. Eleanor Roosevelt really couldn't run for public office. It wasn't so much an option for women of the time. But having a first gentleman, and that's what people usually say uh, they will call it, who is a former president, will definitely be a role model breaker, for sure. And we're thinking that if that happens, that Chelsea Clinton will step into the role of the social part of the first lady's job. And there have been some other first ladies in history who ceded that to their daughters. Oh, interesting. Uh, do you have a favorite first lady? I have uh, a couple of favorites. I'll tell you about one. Uh, certainly Dolly Madison, who lived a long life in this city and was enormously popular for, throughout her life and had such an important role while she was First Lady. But uh, here's a real different one. Frank Cleveland, not Frankie, Frances Folsom Cleveland. Her, uh, her husband, the president, married her when she was just 21. He was 49 in a rose garden ceremony. People at the time called them Beauty and the Beast uh, because he was uh, so much older and overweight and not an attractive character. But they had quite a good political partnership, and they lost the White House. She famously said to the, the White House staff as they were moving out at the end of the four years, don't change the draperies, we'll be back in four years. And in fact, they were. Uh, that's, that's a great, great story. How about Abigail Adams and Barbara Bush, the only people in the history of the world to marry a president and to give birth to a president? Yes, and then Barbara Bush gave us an interview. She's, we're actually the place where she spoke up and said, America doesn't like political dynasties. You remember all the brouhaha that came after right, that? Sure. It was, it was an interview for this series that she said that. She has now retracted and said that, uh, in fact, that, she, that her, her son would be a wonderful president. Now, if he gets elected, she will definitely have her place in the pantheon of first ladies as the mother of two presidents and the husband of one. Yeah. Uh, so they, it's a, quite an interesting dynamic. Helen Taft also was the mother of a political dynasty, but it was Ohio style. She had a number of relatives who continued to serve in elective office in the state of Ohio. The book is called First Ladies, Presidential Historians and the Lives of 45 Iconic American Women. Susan Swain, our guest, uh, president of C-SPAN. Let me ask you a question about C-SPAN. We, sure. we get letters all the time critical of us being too left, too right, too this, too that. C-SPAN probably does the best job of anybody just pointing a camera and sort of telling the this, this story and being apolitical. But do you get letters claiming that C-SPAN is too liberal or too conservative? Would it make you feel better if I said yes? Yes, it yes, would. It would. <laughs> yes, we do all the time because any single event we cover is full of politics on one side or the other. And if you don't hold that point of view, you might get mad about it. And they often write or tweet to us about that. You also do something that's pretty extraordinary is when you take phone calls on C-SPAN, your hosts don't necessarily interact with the caller. The caller can spew Un, I mean, unvarnished ugliness, and the host says, thank you very much for the phone call. Have a nice day. That's pretty extraordinary. 
Well, we view our call-in program as a town hall. And if you were a member of Congress or a public person speaking in front of a town hall, you'd take every question as it comes. And that's really how we've approached it all these these uh, 35 years that we've been doing it. Uh, and there are, are all kinds of people in this country. And sometimes uh, when you hear things that are objectionable to you, it's important to know that there are people out there thinking like that. Uh, because it it reminds you that this is a very pluralistic society and there are all kinds of people and all kinds of opinions out there. And if you don't like them, then you might work to help change that in the court of public opinion. What's what's uh, what's in, in the future for C-SPAN? What's in the future? Well, we're going to do another series, a special here. Well, first of all, it's a presidential election year and our camera crews are all over Iowa and New Hampshire and have been for months. Can you believe it? Or it it's it. We're so far into it already. Uh, so our road to the White House program is very busy with with presidential politics. And then on the history front, our next series, uh, you're going to hear it her first because we haven't announced it publicly, but we're going to do uh, Supreme Court cases that have changed the nation. Mm. And I That'll suspect the Dred Scott case, which happened just a few miles from where we're sitting, is probably going to be front and center in that series. Absolutely. And we're going to do the same thing as we did with First Ladies. We'll be visiting historic sites associated with these landmark cases and try to tell the story of the people behind it. So you'll actually learn about Dred Scott, not just the case that bears his name. Well, you guys should come visit our show then. Yeah, you're always you welcome here. here, Susan Swain. Love it. Love it. I'll be there. You got Thank it. You. The book is called First Ladies, Presidential Historians on the Lives of 45 Iconic Americans. Susan Swain, uh, the author and the editor of the book, which came from the series on C-SPAN. Susan, uh, safe travels, and we'll talk to you down the road. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. 829, make it 830 here, Big 550 KTRS.